Okay, let's take a look how to solve these three basic algebra equations. So this might be a review for uh, some of you out there, or maybe you're just studying this for the first time. Either way, I'm going to explain step-by-step uh, step how to solve these three. And again, uh, they would be classified as just basic uh, algebra equations. Of course, there's more sophisticated uh, equations, but you want to get to know how to do things like this first. So uh, this is probably appropriate for those of you, um, like I'd say, at the pre-algebra or um, beyond level, certainly like Algebra 1 or Introductory Algebra. So if you're going back to school and having to relearn algebra skills, this is kind of a good little basic uh, video to start with. Um, but I'm going to leave you with some other uh, suggestions on solving equations in algebra in general as well. So stay tuned for that. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement, so I'll let you be the judge of that. But if you're curious, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically I have uh, um, all the main courses, uh, pre-algebra, uh, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. But... Um, I also have many, many, uh, in, in total right now, I have over 100 plus different courses. And many of those are in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for, let's say, the GED, SAT, ACT, CLEP, Accuplacer, Alex, maybe a teacher certification, maybe the TEAS um, exam for nursing entrance, uh, there's a ton of reasons why people are trying to learn math outside of a math course. So I can certainly help you prepare in my math prep courses. Just go to my site, check out my full uh, course catalog. You should find your exam. And if you don't, drop me a line and I'll help you the best I can. Um, I also do a lot of work with independent learners like uh, homeschoolers. So if you are a homeschooler, I have a great homeschool learning system. You might be uh, curious about checking out. And then lastly, I just help those of you that are struggling in your math class. Okay, you're frustrated, you need some assistance, definitely, definitely can help you out. Now, one thing that I always like to stress in my videos, being that you're watching this video uh, by virtue of you wanting to learn math, right? You're here because you're like, mm, you know, I want to improve or learn something about mathematics. So if you are um, on this journey, uh, of being a math student or wanting to learn about math, you need to know the importance of uh, taking math notes. So it's just been my experience through decades of teaching a subject. Those students who take great math notes, not good math notes, I'm talking excellent, excellent math notes, almost always do very well in the subject. And then the reverse is true. Those students who like to uh, think they have a photographic memory, or maybe they like to talk to their buddies in class or checking out their cell phone, doing all the things I did, uh, except for the cell phone part. Uh, I went to school in the 1980s and 70s. We didn't have cell phones, at least not the ones that you can like purchase and put in your phone. And they certainly weren't as cool as the ones you have today. But the idea is this. Uh, there's so many distractions out there, and these distractions just follow us like a shadow. So the only way you're going to be able to learn anything, okay, especially math, is to focus. Focus is the key to learning. This is the bottom line. And so you got to engage in activity that's going to keep you focused, and nothing's more um, engaging than note-taking, all right? So the better your notes are, that's a good indication that you're paying close attention in class, which you need to be uh, doing because your teacher is trying to teach you, and if you're not paying attention, then you're not going to be able to learn. So it seems obvious, but so many students miss this uh, point. So improve on your note-taking. Most students need to improve there, but in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here are three basic algebra problems. If you think you know how to do them, I would certainly encourage you to pause the video and go ahead and uh, solve for the respective variables. Um, and then, because obviously I'm going to solve these here in a second. So if you think you know what to, you know what to do, it's always best, for, you know, just to kind of challenge your understanding. Go ahead and pause the video. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you should be able to do these three problems in literally under a minute. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to our first problem. So we have negative three y is equal to 12. Now, before I start solving these, I'm going to tell you. This, don't substitute what I'm teach, or going to be teaching you here as a complete full lesson on solving equations, okay? Uh, as I promised you, what you want to do, if you're, still, if you're new to algebra and you're trying to learn this stuff, 
uh, two uh, pieces of advice, okay? Just to th I'm going to say it now before we get into uh, these equations because I don't want you to think that, oh, I know this, so I'm all done. So the first is I have tons and tons of videos on my YouTube channel in my pre-algebra and algebra one playlist on equation solving. So that's a really good resource for you to practice, continue to practice and learn more about these concepts because what I'm going to be doing here is, is just solving for these particular variables. The second thing is you can join one of my courses like pre-algebra or algebra one. Uh, I would say maybe um, if this is what you're studying, either one of those courses, I teach this stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. So our first one is negative 3y is equal to 12. I want to solve for y. So this is multiplication, negative 3 times y is equal to 12. So in algebra, the, when we're solving for a variable, we want to get the variable by itself. We want our answer to be y equals some number. But right now we have a negative 3y in front of that y, or negative 3 in front of the y. So I want to get that negative three out of there. So when, when I say I have, I want to solve for, uh, for y, so I want y equals a number, this is really a one y. So let's just make sure we're clear here. y is the same thing as one y, but we don't write one y. Same thing like x is equal to one x. We don't write one, uh, we just basically just write the variable like that, but just you need to know that there is in fact a positive one there. So how can we get a positive 1 right here? Well, if I divide this negative 3 divided by a negative 3, anything divided by itself is going to be a positive 1. But in algebra, if I uh, do something to one side of the equation, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So here, I also got to divide by a negative 3. Now I get negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1y, or y, and 12 divided by negative 3 is negative four. So that is the answer. Now, a couple things here, a couple uh, things to point out is that we're dealing with the rules of positive and negative numbers. So you need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers when you're dealing with basic algebra equations. So again, things that you need to review, okay? Uh, so uh, this cannot be one full lesson on all these skills, but no worries. I have videos on all this stuff in my uh, various playlists on my channel. Okay, so if you got that answer right, I would say let's go ahead and give you a little uh, happy face. Okay, that was real easy. You know, we don't want to give you too many points here, but we'll give you credit. We'll give you a little happy face there. Now let's move on to our second question. Now, one last comment about this first question it took us one step to solve for y. All we needed to do was divide both sides of the equation by negative 3, so y is equal to negative 4. So this type of equation right here would be classified as a one-step uh, algebraic equation. Okay. Now, this second equation is going to take more than one step. It's actually going to take us two steps. So when you're solving or learning how to solve equations, you learn how to solve one step, equations, and then obviously two-step, and then lastly, multi-step equations. And here, we're just sticking to one and two-step equations. Obviously, you need to study multi-step equations as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this next problem. So I want to solve for x. Again, we want to get x by itself. So what we're going to do here first is we're going to have to take a couple steps, precisely two, uh, in order to get x by itself. So what we're going to do first is add 1 to both sides of the equation, just like this. So we're going to get um, this down to 4x, all right? We're kind of slowly whittling this down so we can just get x by itself on the left-hand side. So we're going to have to do this in two steps. First, I'm going to have to get rid of that negative 1. And the way I can get rid of this negative 1 over here is to add a positive 1 to it. Because when I add down, like so, I'm going to get 4x, negative 1 plus positive 1 is 0, okay? So that's what I want to do. I want to kind of just start whittling this down to so I can just eventually just get x by itself. But remember, in algebra, whatever I do to one side of the equation here, I um, added 1, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So when you go through my full lessons on solving equations, you'll understand all these kind of techniques. But just the main principle that you want to follow in algebra when we solve equations, you could do pretty much whatever you want on either uh, to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. So here, 
I'm equally adding one to both sides. So now you add down in a column manner, negative one plus one is zero. That effectively removes that negative one, but now I got seven plus one is eight, okay? So now I'm down to this equation here, four X is equal to eight. Now let's talk about this equation here. All right, let me just write this a little bit easier to see 4x is equal to 8. So this equation, 4x is equal to 8, is equivalent to this equation, okay? This is like the shortcut version of it, or like it's the abbreviated version, but they're mathematically uh, equivalent. So you might be saying, well, hey, this is a new equation. How does, you know, are we changing the equation? No, what we're doing is we're taking the, a longer equation and we're continuing to rewrite it in a more simpler uh, manner until effectively it's at its most simplest version, and that is when we had just have x is equal to some number. Okay, so here we have 4x is equal to 8. This is very much like our last um, problem. So to get x by itself, I need to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 4, because 4 divided by 4 is 1, okay, or 1x, or just x, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2, and there you go. That is the answer. X is equal to 2. So if you got that one right, well, then I'm going to go ahead and give you another happy face and an A plus. Maybe I'll give you one star because that did involve two steps. So that's very, very good. All right. Let's move on to our last problem. Now, of course, we could do problems all day long that are more complicated. But these are just, you know, quick little practice review on basic algebra equations and all different types of varieties and flavors and etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know uh, if you're understanding these then you know that's a good uh, good starting point good foundation for you all right so this one's a little bit different I have one fifth t is equal to two so you can look at this a couple different ways I have one fifth times t is equal to two so you're saying well when the number is being multiplied by a variable like 2x is equal to 8, the, what we did here was what? We divided both sides of the equation by 2 so we can get x by itself, okay? So you could, in fact, look at this equation and, and do the same thing. I'm like, okay, how about we just divide both sides of the equation by 1 fifth, okay? And you could do that, right? But over here, um, we're going to have to deal with this little complex fraction. So I have 2 divided by one fifth. Let's go and put this in grouping symbols so we can kind of see a little bit better. So this right here would be two divided by one fifth, which is equal to what? You got to know how to deal with fractions, right? That's the same thing as two times five over one. And if you're struggling with fractions, no worry. I have all these topics and much, much more on my playlist. That's why you want to subscribe to my channel, I'm posting new stuff all the time as well. All right. So we can see we have here two times five over one is of course 10. So two divided by one fifth is the same thing as two times five, okay, or five or one is 10. So that would in fact be the answer. So T is equal to 10. But I'm gonna show you an easier way to approach uh, problems that involve fractions like this. So let's go over here. I have one fifth T is equal to two. So remember when I'm solving equations, the objective is to get T by itself, or get the variable by itself, 1t. So how can I get, uh, I have a 1 fifth here, how can I get this to, to be 1, a 1t? One well, how about we just multiply this by 5 over 1, okay? So if I multiply 5 over 1, or 5 times 1 fifth, what happens? Well, that's going to be 5 over 1 times 1 fifth is going to be 5 over 5, right? You multiply the numerators and denominators, which is, of course, 1, okay? So what you end up doing here is whatever fraction is in front of this variable, just flip it, okay? So this is, if this was two-thirds, this would be three-halves. This is one-fifth, just flip it, five over one. But remember, in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you got to do it to the other side. So this is five over one, and this brings us to where we're at right here, okay? But you can kind of see five over one or five times one-fifth. T is one T or just T, and then 2 times 5 or 1 or 2 times 5 is, of course, 10. And there you go. All right. Now, let's see here. If you got all three of these right, I would say I give you your happy face. You got an A+. Plus. I'll give you 
and I'll give you uh, I'll give you three stars because for some of you, you're just learning this out here. As a matter of fact, let's throw on a mohawk um, just for good you know order here. Um, this is good. Now you know, of course, the title here is basic algebra, but if you're learning algebra for the first time, this is not basic. This is just you know you're learning the topic. So um, you know, don't let this word deceive you. Okay. Uh, in anything that I've learned, okay, the, one of the, the most important things that you can focus on is the foundational knowledge, the foundational skills. And I see this all the time as a math teacher. A lot of students don't pay attention to the basics. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is easy. I'll just, it's basic stuff. I know it, I know it. And then they end up making a lot of mistakes. They don't understand it as strongly as they do. So don't feel bad about reviewing this stuff, okay? It's, it's going to be in your benefit to really, really understand the mechanics uh, behind solving basic algebra equations, which of course are going to involve fractions, positive and negative numbers, and you know writing neat and structured, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, uh, one last piece of advice on this again is it's one thing to watch me do the problems, but you need to practice this stuff. So again, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. Of course, you can always uh, sign up for my pre-algebra or algebra one course in my math help program. All right, so if this video was helpful in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And then obviously, please consider subscribing to my channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's my uh, passion, my goal to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay, there should be no reason for people to be failing math. Okay, if you're failing math, uh, a couple of things are likely going to be going on. One, you got to work harder and smarter. You got to be looking at your notes. But if you're struggling with your uh, the instruction that you're getting, uh, for whatever reason, or you need more instruction, then, you know, today there's so many options out there, like videos like this. You have to now go take the initiative to go find the help that you, uh, you need. Okay. So don't, you know, don't just sit there and just accept a bad math grade. All right. Do something about it. And if I can help, well, then I'm doing my job. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.